Welcome back! In the last video we started our tetromino module and we created an I and a J piece to be used. In this video we're going to go ahead and write a helper function called rotate that will allow us to rotate our tetrominoes around, uh, which is one of the main parts of the Tetris game. Uh, to start off, we're going to go ahead and add a field to our tetromino record, and this field is going to be called pivot. And it's going to be, and it also it's going to be a record. It's going to be a record that has an R, which is the row we're going to rotate around. It's going to have a C, which is the column we're going to rotate around. And we're going to make these floats because on a, a couple of the pieces, uh, we're actually rotating around uh, in between two different rows and columns. Uh, so we have a pivot. Let's also add in a rows, and this is going to be an int, and this is going to tell us how many rows tall our tetromino is. We're going to add in a calls. This is going to tell us how many columns tall our tetromino is. All right. And let's go ahead and start off by adding these into our I and J piece. And so our I piece, the pivot, is going to be on the edge, so all the way on the right side, um, and between the second and third. Um, and I believe our pivot then is going to be in the row, uh, negative zero, r equals negative 0 0.5. And our column is going to be equal to 0 0.5 because we want to be between this and the spot next to it. Okay. How many rows tall are we? Uh, we are four rows tall and we are one column wide. And our J piece is easy. Uh, our pivot is actually going to be right in the middle of the center block there at the origin. So pivot is going to be equal to uh, 0 for R and 0 for column. And we take up three rows and we take up two columns. All right. And just to test this out, let's refresh to make sure uh, we still compile. We do. And I am going to write a quick function so we can see where that uh, pivot point is. I'm going to write a function called draw pivot. And it's going to take in a tetromino. And it's going to produce a form. All right. And so just like we did before, we can use pattern matching here to match just on the pivot because it's the only part of that record that we're interested in. I'm going to create a value called dot. And dot is going to be a circle uh, that is has a radius of 5. This is in the collage uh, module. I'm then going to say that I want to do something else with that circle. And so I'm going to use this uh, vertical bar and greater than to say whatever the thing on the left produced, pass it to whatever is on the right here. So I'm going to say that uh, it, within collage, there's a build function that we've used before and we're going to want to fill this circle as black and so we have a circle 5 filled with the color black and then we need to move it um, to the location we want so I'm going to create something called a uh, translate function and what this is going to do is it's going to move um, and Again, we've seen move before. It's going to move some x and y amount. And how much do we want to move? We want to move our pivot. Uh, how much do we want to move left and right? This is our column. So which column do we want to pivot on? Um, and we want to multiply this by the size of our block. Uh, so we get the correct uh, translation in our uh physical, or not necessarily physical, but in the in the uh, form. And then we want pivot.r times block size. This is how much we're going to move. And then we're going to go ahead and say translate dot. There we go. So now we have this nice draw pivot function. Let's refresh here just to make sure we're still compiling. We're happy. And I'm going to go ahead and move down here. And in our collage, in addition to drawing the form, I'm also going to add a pivot to this list on the same tetromino. 
and let's refresh here. Um, oh, and I have draw pivot, but I meant draw pivot. So let's fix that and refresh. And as you can see, we have this nice dot here representing our pivot point. Let's check out where it is on I. Make sure we didn't make any mistakes. We'll refresh that there, and that's exactly where we want it. So when we rotate this thing, we want this block basically to rotate up into the spot above it. Great. Now we have this nice visualization. Let's go ahead and now work on our uh, rotate function. So our rotate function, we are going to rotate every block inside of or inside of the shape of our tetromino around that pivot point. So to make things simpler, let's write a rotate location function. So we can think of rotating our tetromino as rotating every location in our shape around that pivot point. So we're going to rotate and it's going to take in a pivot which has an R and a C float value. It's going to take in an angle and the location which we want to rotate and it's going to produce a new location. So rotate location takes in the pivot, the angle, and a location which is the pair row column. And this is going to uh, be a little bit mathy, some basic trig. Don't worry if you haven't taken trig or uh, you don't remember the rules. Just so you know, I actually had to look this up. I typically look this stuff up every time I'm doing this stuff just to make sure I'm doing it correct. And the way this works is we're basically going to take the location we want to rotate, translate it by the pivot, rotate, translate it by the pivot so that it's relative to the origin, zero, zero. And then we're going to rotate around the origin because it's really easy to rotate around the origin. So we're going to have a row origin, and that's going to be equal to row minus uh, the pivot r, so we're translating it. And remember that location is uh, integer values, so we got to convert these to floats. We're going to have a row uh, column origin, and same thing, to float on the column. And we're going to subtract out the pivot from that. The next thing we want to do is we want to get the sine uh, from the, the angle, the sine of our angle, and the cosine of our angle, and these are provided in basics. Again, like I said, if you need any of the math stuff, if you're doing something and suddenly you don't have any math functions, you need to import basics. And then we're going to apply our basic trig from our trig book and multiply our row origin. Uh, so our new row is going to be our row origin uh, times our uh, our cosine angle minus our column origin times our sine. And our new call is going to be equal to our row origin times our sine plus our column origin times our cosine. And so now we have our rotated values and we need to turn these back. Remember we're returning a location. So we need to convert these back into integer values. And so we're going to have our uh, new row and our new column is going to be equal to uh, round. We're going to round uh, our row rotated and we need to shift it back to the correct pivot location, so pivot.r. And we are also going to round our um, column, our column rotated, and shift it back by the amount we need to using C. So this is our new row and our new column. And we can just say let in like that. Uh, finish that off. And I think we have a rotate location function. Let's Let's come, let's refresh, make sure we don't have any compilation errors. We do. We have a call rotate. Again, I have a, a typo. My uh, middle finger is not quite hitting that D button the way I want it to. So let's go ahead and refresh. 
we have another issue, and we have a thing saying here that pivot.c uh, can't be added because of int and float. This is the issue we were running into before. And what I'm going to do is just add this uh, less than and uh, vertical bar, and that says whatever happens, you know, compute this thing on the right side first, and then pass it in. So I'm going to go ahead and use this in both spots here and refresh that. And there we go. So it basically added these things together and then rounded it to an int. So we have our rotate location function. And so now that we have a rotate location function, we can easily, uh, very easily write our rotate function. It turns out to be quite simple. So our rotate function is going to take in a tetromino and it's going to produce a new tetromino that's been rotated uh, by 90 degrees. So I'm going to do rotate tetromino and we're going to say equals and we're going to start off by saying um, we're going, we, we need to use this rotate location function uh, in some way. And so I'm going to create a little partially applied function called uh, rotate helper. And rotate helper is going to be our rotate location function, but I'm going to specify that I want the pivot to always be tetromino.pivot. And I want it to be 90 degrees. And it just so happens that there's a function provided in basic called degrees, which will take, this allows us to enter an integer value, 90, or not an integer value, but really a float value, 90, and it will convert it into the standard degrees format in Elm, uh, which sine and cosine are expecting. So now that we have this rotate helper function, we need to discover our new shape. And it turns out our new shape, we can just map our new rotate helper function over our old shape. So our tetromino dot shape. Just like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to now pass in every location in tetromino dot shape into rotate helper and we'll get a new list with our new shape. So finally we need to create a new record which is very similar to our old record where we're going to say that it's the same, it's the same uh, record except everything is the same except our shape is going to be the new shape and we need to uh, juxtaposition our rows and columns so our rows is going to be equal to our columns since we rotated 90 degrees and our calls are going to be equal to our rows just like that so we swap those out and let's refresh make sure we didn't uh, accidentally introduce any compilation type errors now we're happy let's go ahead and see how this works let's rotate our tetromino we'll refresh oh and there we go rotated 90 degrees We'll rotate it again. Rotate it another 90 degrees. We'll rotate again. And there we go. We rotate around that uh, nice pivot point there. Excellent. Let's check out what the J piece looks like. There's the J piece. If we only rotate it once, it looks like that. And if we rotate it twice, We get that. Excellent. Excellent. We have finished our rotate function. Uh, there's a few more helper functions we need to write, and we need to define the remaining five tetromino pieces. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that in the next video.